it seems that every time I look into a new front end for a llama, I discover a new best favorite tool. I looked at Open Web UI and I thought it was going to be one of the best front ends for Olama. And then I found Misty. And that was pretty much the best that I'd seen for a simple UI where it takes away a lot of complication of Open Web UI. But now I've found an even better simple UI for Olama and it installs in a completely different way compared to either of those two options. If you aren't familiar with what Olama is, well, welcome to the community. Olama is a tool for running large language models locally on whatever hardware you have. Assuming your hardware includes either an NVIDIA or AMD GPU of a recent vintage, or you're running an Apple Silicon Mac. To find out more about Olama, you can visit olama.com. And there you can download installers for Mac, Windows, and Linux. You may also find install packages on Brew and Apt and other places, but your best experience is always going to be with the official installers on the main website. Open Web UI is installed using Docker. There are options for installing it without Docker, but you're going to have a much better time using Docker. If you don't have Docker, it's probably still easier installing Docker and then install Open Web UI on top of Docker. Misty is installed as, I think it's an Electron app but it embeds Olama inside the installation. So you don't even have to have Olama installed. You know, that was one of the original intentions when we first created Olama, but some folks don't like that. If you do have Olama installed, it can use the models that you've already downloaded, but by default, it's going to use its own copy of Olama. But this tool is an extension for Google Chrome and other browsers that leverage Google Chrome. It's called Page Assist. So if you do a search online for Page Assist, you're probably gonna come up with a feature for Procreate on the iPad. Page Assist doesn't have the interesting branching options that we saw in Misty, but it does share some of the RAG options from Open Web UI. And it's far simpler to use than either one of those. So let's take a look at how to work with Page Assist. I'll start at the GitHub repo. Scroll down to the README and we can see the key features. The first highlighted feature is a sidebar that can be opened on any page. You can use it to ask questions about the page you're on. I wish they started with the web UI as the top feature because that is the highlight of this app. That is well designed and works perfectly. The third feature really is the same as the first feature. Another feature not listed is the ability to incorporate web searches in your questions to a local model, but it's really not the best implementation there. So let's look at using Page Assist. I'll start with the main UI for the app. At the top, we have a nice dropdown for the model. We can see all the models you have downloaded. Next to that is prompts. Though, as you can see here, we don't have anything here. We have to populate that in another section of the app. Down below, we can ask a question. Why is the sky blue? And we get the answer in the section above that text box. Below that, we have a checkbox to enable internet searching. Here we can see the results of that search. And we can also see down here the references that were used that were then pushed to the model to summarize. On the right side is a microphone button. And this allows you to use speech to text. We'll see how to configure that in a little bit. And next to that is an image allowing you to use an image with a lava model. At the top left is a button to open the sidebar and that sidebar shows us a list of recent chats. And at the top right, we have a share button, which is a little bizarre. A link to the GitHub repo and then the link to the settings for this particular app. In settings at the top, we can set the speech recognition language and the language for the app and whether we want dark or a light theme. And you know me, I am never going to choose dark. Below that is what search engine we want to use when incorporating search. We can use Google or DuckDuckGo or Sogu, which I'm not familiar with. And then we can enable text-to-speech, setting the text-to-speech provider and the text-to-speech voice. This was really cool five years ago, but the system provider tends to be kind of lame and not really that interesting. So I've just ignored it. And then down to the bottom, we have a button to delete the chat history, 
as well as a way to export and import data. Let's go back up to Olama settings. We can set the URL for Olama, and so this is just going to be localhost port 11434, and then some settings for RAG. You can choose the embedding model. Nomic embed text is one of the better ones to use. And then we have chunk size and chunk overlap. This is a little bit confusing here. It's unclear from the UI whether this is based on number of characters or tokens or sentences, but later on we're able to see that it's probably just actually characters, which doesn't make a lot of sense. It really should be based on sentences. And then we have the prompts that are used for RAG versus a web search. So you can go in here and tweak them if you notice there's a problem with the way it works. Now we can come up top and click on Manage Models. And this is actually a pretty nice UI for managing the models. We can see some details about the models. I can click the trash can icon to delete it and the recycle icon to repull the model from olama.com. You can also add a new model, assuming you know the name of the model available. Now let's go to Manage Knowledge. This is Retrieval Augmented Generation. So here's where we can add our PDFs, our markdown documents, text documents, and other types of documents. After we add a document, we're able to see which embedding model was used to create the embedding. And now you can come down to Manage Prompts. So here's where we can add prompts that show up in the dropdown at the top to help make it easier to add default prompts as you're working with different models. And then we can come down to Page Share URL. Now, this is, from my perspective, totally bizarre. After you ask a question or a series of questions to a model, you can choose to share that output, and it becomes a web page that anybody else can look at. I, I, I don't understand why you want to do this. And, and that's coming from somebody who finds it interesting to share their notes with the world. Uh, OK, so let's go back to the chat window. And I want to ask a question from the document that I uploaded. Tell me about attention. And there we have an answer that pulls information out of the document and tries to answer it in a way that would make sense to me. Let's see, I added a prompt earlier, so let's try age specific. And I can change age to 10 years old. But there's one more feature that they push within the GitHub repo, and that's the side panel where you can ask a question about any web page. So I'll bring up the Mac Rumors website and find an interesting article that I'd like to ask a question about. Here's one I want to know more about the Apple Pencil Pro that was announced at the Apple event just last week. So I press the shortcut to open the panel, and now I have to check the checkbox that says chat with the current page. Otherwise, it won't chat with the current page. And that checkbox goes away, and the only way I can bring it up is by closing this panel and reopening the panel. So you gotta remember to do that. What are the new features of the Apple Pencil? And we get a nice, simple answer. Now, let's see where things start to break down this, with this. I'll go back to the front page and now choose the best new features of the iPad Pro. Tell me about the new features on this page. And so rather than telling me the new features of the iPad Pro, because that's the page I'm on, it's still talking about the new features of the Apple Pencil, which is the page I was on when I opened the panel. So let's try closing the panel. We'll use the same keyboard shortcut, but nothing happens. We can't use the keyboard shortcut to close the page. If I refresh the page, it'll only refresh the main page in this browser. I don't have a way of refreshing the panel. And the only way to do this, I think, is to close the panel and then reopen the panel. So you got to close the panel not using the keyboard shortcut. And then really, you need to open the panel using the keyboard shortcut. So that's all a bit frustrating. And then the panel doesn't update with the new page, which is also kind of annoying. According to the repo, this works best in Chrome and Brave and on Edge and not on Arc. My preferred browser is Arc. It's just a whole lot better in every way, but the panel isn't supported on Arc, which is fine because the panel is a bit lame even on Chrome. So I don't plan on ever using that. But Page Assist is still an amazing tool just for that super simple UI that has integration with RAG, that allows me to ask questions to a web search, even though that web search is often not that great. But for just quick interactions with a model, it's hard to beat Page Assist. What do you think? Have you tried Page Assist? Have you tried a different app that you think I should look at? Let me know in the comments below. 
You can also follow the other things I'm working on by signing up for the newsletter. You can find that at technoevangelist.com slash newsletter. Or if you want to support what I do, visit patreon.com slash technoevangelist. Thanks so much for being here. Goodbye. My water bottle's never here. <laughs>